from Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Yes, hello, good evening. I'm Manu Poking. I'm the head coach of the uh, Thailand national team of so- soccer. And we are talking, and you are guys listening to the Bola Bola Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Bola Bola Show podcast. It's me, Steven, again. And once again, I am here with my co-host, buddy, Bala. Hey, Bala, how's it going? Hi, Steven. How are you doing? Uh, very well. Happy finally back to Bola Bola Show again. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, what is it for today? So, you know, we have a very special episode. And with us is none other than Coach Mano Poking, the national team of the, of the War Elephants from Thailand. Hello, Coach. Oh. Hello, Sivan. Hello, Bala. Nice to meet you guys. Uh, yeah. I hope we can have a nice chat. Talk sure, a little sure. bit about football, about the football in our region here. Mm-hmm. Always okay. uh, and, nice uh, to talk to you. Yep. And uh, first things first, Coach, congratulations for winning the FF Suzuki Cup with Thailand. Um, yeah. We'll it's definitely, get, we'll definitely uh, talk more about that. Uh, but for, Bala, let's get into the first question first. All right. Uh, I think it's always the beginning. So when the Thai FA approached you for the national team job, what was going through your mind at the time? And uh, did you feel you were ready for the job, uh, especially when having a lot of experience in the club level and this is the first national team that you're taking over? Right. Uh, good, good question, but I mean, I was in Brazil. I was on uh, uh, on my holidays. I was just coming back from, from Vietnam, where I was coaching a Ho Chi Minh club, Ho Chi Minh City FC. And uh, uh, the the COVID stopped the, temp- the championship. And so I was supposed to go back to Vietnam. And that was the scenario when I, when I got the call. But before I got the call, I saw already in some news that uh, the new team manager, né, the, the, this woman, the power, very powerful woman and well-known woman in Thailand, uh, her name is uh, uh, Kun Peng, they call her uh, Madame Peng. She's the owner also of Thai Port Club, is one of the clubs in Thailand. She was appointed as a, a, as a manager of the national team and then starts a lot of rumors about some coaches and my name was one of them but i being very honest i was not expecting to make the run at the end because <laughs> uh, i still had before the appointment uh, yeah many people also from the media some fans uh, doubting a little bit that appointment because they want a local coach some of them and others or a few of them also saying that uh, in a cl- club base i was uh, not winning any trophy until there. I was six years uh, with Bangkok United and we finished uh, runners up twice. We lost the cup final. So we never really got that, that trophy that every, everyone was expecting for, for one of the top clubs in the country. So I was not really counting with that, knowing that my name was one of them. But at the same time, when you see your name, I was already feeling proud. But then you start at least to think about that's why I mean that when I really got the call, I was already uh, prepared for that. I was, of course, then very happy to got the call. The call was a very straightforward call. Like, hi, man, I am the manager. I, I, I am the one to take the, the, the decisions. And uh, I'm calling you to, to ask you if you are in or not. I know that you can do the job. Uh, we play against each other many times. Uh, don't worry about the media or don't worry about these people that might not be liking the idea. I will cover your back. Just tell me if you are ready and if you are motivated and if you can do the job. Simple mm-hmm. like that. Okay. And uh, because I thought about that before, I mean, that is really a dream job for me in, in that scenario because uh, Vietnam was uh, very uncertain when they will go back, how they will go back. Né? And I was free, let me say, I was out of my contract. I took a little bit of risk, taking a five months contra only was like a contra for the Suzuki Cup. But at the same time, I knew that I, I know all the players. I mean, I coach, I coach uh, all my career as a head coach in Thailand. I was eight years there, six of them in one of the top clubs. Many national team players also already coached by myself. So I was really ready and happy for that appointment. And I knew from the beginning that if if we would get all the players, né, especially the ones 
not in Thailand that I also knew from the times before that uh, we would have a very strong squad, knowing that, of course, we would not have time to, to work together, what is always important for a coach. But at the same time, I knew that I would have a lot of quality in the hand. I mean, a lot of quality players, not only for a first 11, but also for, for options on the bench. And I told everyone when I was then appointed that we, we needed to grow together into the tournament because we would be there for 32 days in case we reach the finals. And that is a lot of time, even knowing that if between the match was not a good time to work. I mean, from, from the intensity of the training, because you have to recover, but at the same time, you have a lot of video analysis, you have a lot of talks, you, you can get better together with the team. Né? They, the, the players that are not playing, they are then having a normal training. Then you can also explain them. And as you guys know, we use also a lot. I mean, we use all the players actually né? in the tournament. It means was a good time in Singapore to, to make it very clear the way we like to play or what is uh, important for us in that short time to make it happen. And at the end, I'm just saying that many times now it was, of course, easier for me as a coach because of the quality of the players. I mean, all the credit to the quality of the players. I mean, the game belongs to them and they just uh, accept the ideas. I mean, they, they, they buy, as we said, they buy the ideas that I have. I think they like to play the way that I like any way to play. I mean, a bit more offensive, taking some risks, but trying to dominate, trying to control the game. And I think the players, uh, they bought the idea from, from the first day. And again, at the end, with their quality, I just brought some tools or some, some game plans. But at the end, they are the ones that just just executed that in a almost perfect way, I could say. And how challenging was it to prepare this team? I mean, uh, you know, you only had like two months a plan ahead. I mean, it's not the most ideal situation, but how was how challenging it was for you? Yeah, that, as I said, important was to have everyone on board. I mean, every player that we 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 know and we want, and that is also a good job from from. Madame Peng, because she's very good on, on relations. I mean, she's the one that call uh, Marino, Sapporo, Leicester City, né? and then the clubs, they release the players because that's not forget that Suzuki Cup is not a FIFA tournament. I mean, a FIFA day tournament. If the club doesn't want to release, they don't need to. So, but she, with a good relation with the clubs, could get all the players. The challenge was just to, to know, look, how can we play really that way that I like if you don't have time for training that because a lot of things in football you need time for training you can have a good idea but you need repetition that's what I always mean automatisms you have to to if you want to build up from the back you need sometimes two three weeks to make it in a perfect way but uh, again the again I can repeat that the quality of the players makes things easier because uh I just show the idea. We make that one or two training sessions and they could just do it in the game. And uh, yeah, I was very happy to see that and very, very proud of my, my players. Hmm, interestingly, but before you took over the team, uh, Thailand has a dismal run during the World Cup qualifier and you went, you ended up at fourth. And then in your opinion, what were the key indicators that were missing the team back then? Because I think they kind of lost the identity of one of the best teams in Southeast Asia. It's difficult to, to, to talk when we are not uh, knowing exactly what is happening there in the daily work. Né? I know that coaches like uh, Hajevac, like, like uh, Nishino, they are very good coaches and they proved that already, but somehow it was not working maybe with... Uh, the, the game idea uh, was a little bit more defensive than my idea. And I believe the Thai players, they, they fit to a more offensive and more open game or, or more controlled game with the ball. This might be one reason why it, it, it helped it, uh, on, with my way, I mean. But at the same time, I also believe that they are in some moments of these tournaments or these 
not achievements, uh, quite unlucky for not having all the players on board, having some key players injured, you know. Sometimes the football is really about some small details, some timing. Eh? I can only say that I had all the players that uh, I wanted and that we needed. They were all on board and they were all in a very good fitness condition and that uh, helped a lot the team. But I also believe that the, the way or the game plan or some game strategies that we had or some decisions about players. I took some controversial decisions with some defenders, for example, that were midfielders or, or in, even in the final against Indonesia, we play actually with two uh, defensive midfields as a as a center backs and these are the moments where I I always say that I, I I love that game or I love football because I I truly believe that some decisions sometimes can can really help a team to play uh, with all potential that they can and I believe that in this tournament we have many decisions to take and almost all of them work it uh, for the benefit of the team mm -hmm. okay and, and of course you know coach by winning the fs suzuki cup thailand has pretty much regained its place as the king of southeast asia but what will be the next important step for the war elephants it was important to to make it very clear after the the final already that uh, we are not uh, happy only with the suzuki cup we know how important it is we know how much prestige this tournament has you can see that alone based on how many coaches left their countries or because of not winning let me say or not doing a good performance uh, that shows that the, the tournament has a, a, a huge prestige in our region here but at the same time we want more than that we want to try to go further or to to be more competitive let me say especially first in asia and now with the World Cup dream that I really believe, I mean, not only for, for us, Thailand, but for, for the strongest teams here in Southeast Asia, that we, we should uh, dream that high. Dreaming is part of, uh, of the life and motivated us always. And now not being four and a half spots, but being eight spots, really, uh, I believe that one day, one of our clubs here in the region from Southeast Asia could could make that big achievement to be to be in a, in a World Cup that is the, the maximum what a, a national team can achieve. But for that, <laughs> though, it's a lot of work, né? a lot of work and a lot of detailed work, a lot of uh, uh, investments also, not only financial investments, but effort investments. We have to change a lot of things. We have to improve a lot of things. But I am very long here in the country, and I believe that uh, somehow I can I can help with some ideas. And if you have the right people in the right places, and all stick together to the same plan and to the same dream, that we can make some steps forward. So talking about competing with the best, I think I agree with you. But usually the Southeast Asia teams, usually, of course, the Suzuki Cup, for example, is very passionate team with fans around, but. What actually will take this, uh, a Southeast Asia team to compete with the very best in Asia? I mean, let's, let's, let's put aside world for at least in the best in Asia, like Japan or even Korea or even Australia. Look, first thing that I believe yeah. hmm. uh, in, in general, I mean, for all of us, now, I'm not talking only about Thailand, but if I see now around the, the region here that I know some of the championships, if I... If I, I was in Vietnam now, just came in from Vietnam. Vietnam is also one of the strongest, actually, in the, in the FIFA ranking, and then uh, still the number one here in Southeast Asia. So uh, what I believe for all of us, where do we have to start? Or there is two, for me, two very important points or key points for us to, to improve or to at least reduce the gap to the biggest clubs in, in Asia. And these two points would be, first of all, the, the youth system from all the countries. I mean, then I can talk a lot about Thailand, that uh, at the moment that is not good because we don't have a very clear competition for that boys that are now 15 or 17, 18. They have just to hope that someday one of the clubs will get them and they will get a contra and then they will start playing. But we are wasting 
that gold years that I mean about the development of a player when they are 14 until 18, that is a, a very important years for the development of a player. And at the moment, there is no regular competition in Thailand to push them or to or to make them competitive boys. Né? And, and the second one, because then we are talking already about ready players. If you see now, I mean, if you see the national team now that we have Malaysia or Indonesia or Vietnam, is, is clear, in my opinion, the quality of the league. The quality of the league needs to improve because if the quality of the league improve, if the infrastructure of the clubs improve, you have better conditions for training, you have better stadiums to play, you will, of course, also attract more fans, but I'm talking first about the daily work, the leagues that we have here, they need to be stronger. And I talk this again, knowing a bit or reading a bit, uh, following the other leagues. Né? We can see, for example, fantastic crowds in uh, Indonesia, for example, but still, if you see the quality of the game there or sometimes the condition of the pitch, or if you ask some players that were working there, how is the training uh, uh, ground or how are the facilities of the club, I believe is still a lot of space for improvement. And this makes you as a football player stronger when you have standard, I mean, international standard of training. If you go now to Europe and you see what is the reality there from a whatever second division, third division club in, a, in the top leagues, they have better facilities and better infrastructure than us here in Southeast Asia. Thailand is still the best league for me, but every single league here have a lot of space for improvement. And every league, of course, should care first of, of, of themselves to see how can I improve my national team. I need a better league. I need a more organized league. I need to attract better foreign players. For that, I need probably more investment, more sponsorship. And for that, the, 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 the league must be a more attractive. Mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah, or, or if you go, if I'm talking with you guys, and if you go about or talking about Malaysia, I also follow a bit or talk to some players. There I see a different problem. For example, you have with, with uh, JDT, you know, with Johora, uh, everything what I just mentioned about structure, facilities and this, but what about the other teams? And what about the competition in the league, in your league? How realistic it is that another club that is not Johor will be competitive? Mm -hmm. Because they got all the players. If one player is young and good in another team, they go there and offer double money and they, they are in Johor. Mm -hmm. Johor end up playing games with two, three national team players on the bench because they have all of them. They have a lot of quality. They are amazing as a club. Look the stadium, look the facilities. I talk with players that played already for Johor, but what about then the, the league? How can, can you improve as a league? Or us here in Thailand, we have, of course, three, four, five good clubs, what is good for the competition, but even clubs that are really down in the table, they start to build training centers. They start to invest on, on the use, of course, then you need now the help of the federation to say, look, what about the competition? Can we have a under-19 Thai league, under-17 Thai league? Can I push a, a boy that is 17 to make him hungry to say, I am champion of Malaysia under-17 with uh, whatever, Selangor, you understand? Mm -hmm. yep. So... This is the way to make these young boys hungry and to make them improve. But today we don't have these guys in this region. I was 11 years in Europe now or seven years in Germany. That is amazing how they work there. And even there, there is everything connected. Now. If a player from, from Bayern Munich is doing well and the under 17 or under 19, he is automatic available to play for the first team, for example, because everything is connected. Now they, you are playing their own championships, but if you are a player from Bayern Munich, you are a player from Bayern Munich. doesn't matter how old you are. And here, for example, I talk now about Thailand. I, I built some good academy system in Bangkok United, but they have to play in their own league. It means if my under-19 team is playing in the third division then, or sometimes fourth division, 
and their boy is doing very well, I cannot bring him up to my team because he's registered for that league, you understand? For the fourth league. Oh, okay. But he's so good. Why he cannot play uh, now with me in the Thai league? He cannot, for example. So basically you're saying that if you have if you have a 19 year old 17 year old boy who's good enough to play for the first team you are unable to bring him into the first team right Exactly because he's playing in that other competition that is mm-hmm. now in the moment in Thailand for example Okay okay wow okay. then they don't they don't follow uh, the 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 first team you understand they don't play like a youth league mm-hmm. and everyone can be called up for the first team mm-hmm. they have to play Again, of course, you can develop them. They will be all 19, 20, 21, but they have to play in the fourth league, for example, or in the third league sometimes. Mm. Yeah, but then they are registered for that competition. They cannot play for two different competitions. Oh, okay, okay. All right, that's, that's an interesting revelation I'm learning here today. Thank you so much for sharing, Coach. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, Coach, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you know, you've been runners-up on several locations with your club. How does it feel to finally get over that bump by winning a title? It was very, very important, eh, Sivan, because uh, I, I know now I can, I can talk a little bit more about that, but uh, <laughs> I am actually uh, a coach that uh, I really want to win everything. Eh? I, I, I'm a really bad loser. I'm a bad loser. I'm a very competitive guy. I'm, I'm very hungry for that. But I have also at the same time a different perspective about uh, winning is everything. I mean, working is everything, giving everything, putting a lot of effort, spending a lot of time on your job is for me everything. But winning at the end is only one. So the people, they got, or I mean, now I am released. That's why I was so happy because I, I was like somehow getting the stamp of, uh, ah, he's a good coach, but he is not winning anything. But at the same time, I imagine I... I I arrive in Bangkok tonight. They are fighting for relegation. They are in in, uh, in the relegation zone. And after five years or six years work, and of course investments and and academy building, training, and they are one of the top three clubs in the country. That for me is also an achievement. Mm, okay. You understand? That is for me also success. I was happy there. Mm-hmm. I know I want to win that two times that I finish on I, mean, I, I want to win the, that cup. You basically brought the team from 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 where it was at the bottom of the league to somewhere in a more respectable position itself. That's I mean that's that that is a winning. I have to agree with you. That is for me a winning. But again, if you see the the, the, the football uh, society, let me say, uh, they judge you about trophies. And again, the fans also they are judging everything on trophies. Of course, if you are a Manchester United, Liverpool City. If you don't win, nobody cares if you are playing beautiful or you are building something or if your academy is good. But these guys are ready. We are talking about a totally different region where you have to make a lot of steps to say, okay, I am a really fully professional team with everything, with personnel, with uh, infrastructure, with academy, with training center, with our own stadium, with a fan base. That you cannot talk about this uh, about all the teams here in Southeast Asia. Very few teams are complete with that structure. I mean, and I was taking one club that was really two years in a row. The first year they escaped like one round before finish the championship, and when I arrived in the middle of of the championship, they were in the relegation zone. And today they are top, really top. Every player here in Thailand want to play also for Bangkok United. And then for me, that's a winning. I mean, it's a, it's a winning for me as a coach. They have a very clear structure, how to play, a very clear philosophy. It was entertainment. It was, we, we, we won a lot of games. We have a very, very good winning rate. I mean, we, we won, I think, 60% of our games in five years. So, but okay, at the end, only one team can win. And I'm not saying that is not important. It's very important, especially for the fans. They want to see your team winning. And if you don't win, you are not good. I'm just saying that I have a different, a little bit different perspective. What is winning in football? Because it depends on where you are, which team you have. That is for some teams where winning is obligation. 
And there, then you can be judged, okay, you are good if you win, if you are bad, if you don't win. But then you have to coach Barcelona, Madrid, Juventus, Bayern, Dortmund, you understand? Mm -hmm. It was not like that. So you cannot tell me I was not good. I will not take it. I will not accept it. I mean, and that I am strong enough to, to, to put that motivation on myself. I was just saying, let's keep working, man. Keep working that one day it will come. I know one day it will, it will come. And now that's why I was very happy that uh, I got the opportunity with Thailand because then I knew, okay, now is obligation. Eh? That's why I said from the beginning of the championship, we are here to win. Because obligation, what I mean is we are one of the favorites. Then we have a big chance to make it happen. But winning in football, or for me, a guy that really loves the game, I'm saying is not everything because it depends. Depends where you are and what you want. I gave that example many times now in other interviews. If you ask me now what you want, man, what you prefer, if now I give you two options for a job, you can coach Brighton in the Premier League because I like that coach. That's why I'm using him as an example. Yeah? But uh, you want to coach Brighton now for five years of your career or you want to coach uh, Shakhtar Donetsk in Ukraine? What will happen with Shakhtar Donetsk from these five years? You probably will win four or five. And you will say, okay, I am Ukrainian champion for five times. Or you say, okay, but you coach Brighton, you're going to play in these five years 10 times against Liverpool, 10 times against Menu, 10 times against Chelsea, 10 times against Spurs. And you will compete. Because you are showing something. Your team is small, but somehow you are playing that beautiful game. And you are competing with them. So if you ask me which one you want, I want to be the Brighton coach. Mm -hmm. And then what? You will say that I'm not a winner because I want to be the Brighton coach? No, I want to be the Brighton coach because I believe. Né? I, I believe, né? Stephen, that if I can compete for five years against that top clubs, in a very good level with Brighton, one day I will coach one of them. And then probably we win. Because our career is not in one year, two years, five years. We can coach for 20 years if we are good. You understand? So that is my perspective about winning. But just to come back to your question, it was important for me to get that stamp out of my back. Like, ah, he is not a winner. Okay, now... If you mean that is what I was missing, okay, now I'm winner. Let's continue the job. Let's continue the work because I love to see the game. I love to see my teams playing. Okay, I think you have a very beautiful insight of uh, what is another side of winning and the passion of the game. I think we clearly can uh, hear from your voice itself. Uh, yeah. Let's look into the player's side. I think, uh, well, I think not every team in Southeast Asia is blessed with a player of superstars, uh, similar uh, J or uh, known as full name of Chanatip uh, Songkrasen, if I pronounce it correctly. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel to have the privilege of coaching a player like him of such class and caliber who we think is a future? Yeah, he, he is an amazing boy, Nabala. He's uh, not only a good player on the field, he's also a fantastic person off the field. He's uh, He has a lot of charisma, what makes him more special as a human being and really beloved from the people in Thailand, from the teammates from the staff there is nobody that cannot love that boy and on top of that he's very professional and an unbelievable hard worker with a winning mentality with a leadership i mean when i arrived in thailand eight years ago i already met him he was my player i was coaching the under 22 at that time he was 18 years old yeah so uh, I knew him already from that time. Everyone was already talking about the Wonder Boy. And then if you see his career, he then starts to play regularly in the Thai League. He, he played amazing games with Montong in the Champions League. He took the next step. That is also what I say about if you want to grow, you have sometimes. If you don't, if you still need time to make our leagues stronger, the players that are better than the others, they should go abroad. They should try the challenge. They should get out of their comfort zone. And that is what Chanatip did. 
He went to Japan not for, for fun. He went there because he wanted to prove that he was good. And look now, he was not only a key player for support, and now he is the, the most expensive transfer player in the, in the J-League history. Yeah. And, yeah. and he will probably be, be again a very good player there. We hope that now we're going to follow him and he will have a big chance also to be Japanese champion. And that step also for us, for the best players in Malaysia, in Indonesia, in Vietnam, in Thailand, if the league don't give you what is enough to make you one of the best, why not to, you don't get out of your comfort zone and go there where it will be hard. It will be difficult. It will be painful sometimes. You're going to miss your food, your mom, your dad, your sisters, your house. But this makes you a better player and, in my opinion, a better person. Wonderful, wonderful, Coach. And of course, I mean, is this something that you always talk to the players in the national team about, you know, going, I mean, encouraging them to go abroad and all that? Or is this something that you feel that it needs to come out of themselves as an individual person? Uh, it should come out of themselves, of course. But we as a leader also, né, the head coach is in this case also a leader. You have to encourage them also to, to take them as examples, to show them. Or, or I praise Messi J many times now, né, Chanati, not only with you guys, with all. And I believe that he is a role model. Né, and, and, and it's very important that he's also the first one to come out to say, look, that's the way, that is what you guys should do. It. Because he's now idle. Né? I mean, he was anyway all the time idle, but now three times né, MVP of the, of the competition. Uh, now going to... to to the best team in, in Japan at the moment. So the people, the young players that they see that now, they see, oh, okay, that is nice. Yeah, they, they see that as an example. And then it's very important that we coaches, or my, in my case now as a head coach, that I repeat that many times, how important it is for the players to make that step and to try to play in a stronger league when your league still suffering with Whatever. Every league has their own problems, I always say. But you always have something to improve here in our region. But if you go to the J-League, if you go to K-League, if you go to Europe, you will be challenging some difficult time. And I believe that makes you stronger. As I said, I, I believe you can learn with that. I mean, I'm very suspect to say that because I am a a uh, word uh, around, uh, let me say, I love that I can, with my job, uh, all my money and, and at the same time, uh, go everywhere in the world and know new people, new cultures, new language. Yeah, I'm in, uh, I work now in nine different countries. That's why I'm a bit, I'm a bit suspect to, to always say that that is good because it's the way I believe for myself. But if you talk only now about our region and we talk about a good national team player in Malaysia, in Indonesia, Vietnam, Thailand, the best ones, they should try. Mm -hmm. What they're going to lose? Nothing. If nothing, if you cannot do it at the end, if you don't feel comfortable, you always can come back. And you will always have your team back in your country. Mm -hmm. And then you continue. But what's the problem to try for one year or two years? Mm -hmm. That's a very, very thought word, thoughtful words of yourself, coach. Now, coach, you know, I mean, you, you've been in this job for, I mean, basically as a football coach for so many years. And in any team that you coach, what is the three most important values that you always instill in your players? Look, uh, discipline, professionalism, and, and very important for me to be straightforward in all the conversations that you need to have as a coach to play, a player to play, a player to staff, staff to board. Now, this is, for me, was always very important. I'm a coach that I'm, I'm, I look for the contact, I mean, with the players to the small talks, for the conversations. I am not a coach that like to be distant from the players to say, okay, let's keep the hierarchy or whatever everyone has. No, own opinion of course but I try to always make it very clear to the player in the club or in the national team where I see the player you know this kind of of straightforward conversation to say look 
at the moment you are not playing because of that or at the moment you are playing because of that or how you should continue with that or if you are the the third player now even that kind of conversation to to keep you uh, a healthy dressing room i believe a lot on healthy dressing rooms to say look there many people are angry or disappointed because they are not playing but somehow we need to make it happen that that we have a good daily work a good week of work you need to pass the message that the player that's not playing, it's very important to make things happen because he's the one to push the first 11 all the week. And this, I believe, also we got very good with the Thai national team in the Suzuki Cup. Would the tournament help us somehow? We won the first three games. I could play a totally different 11 against uh, Singapore in the fourth game. So everyone feel part of it. But that... Uh, straightforward communication it's very important for me and again i don't uh, accept players that are not giving 100 percent in the training i don't accept players that are always complaining and just saying that uh, ah, why i don't play the coach don't like me or whatever these kind of things are then the players will have a very difficult time because i i believe on hard work i believe that if you work hard you will get the chance and if you get the chance you have to prove and again then at the end the coach must decide anyway if it was good enough or not but I like to be very straightforward and very clear to the players where I see them what they have to improve how is the chance to play and why it's important that everyone keeps fighting every single training session I know I learned that a lot in Germany also in Germany if you play a a 5v5 small side game, they want to win. They want to win. The goalkeepers, they want to compete with each other. The goalkeeper that is the second goalkeeper, he wants so much to win that five against five, to say or to, to show the coach, look, I know I am number two, but I am also good. And if you can have this kind of competition, I know it's not easy, but if you can have this kind of competition in the national team or in your club, you are already one step ahead of your opponent. Mm, okay, very nice. Nice, nice uh, words from there from you, coach. Okay, well, I, I mean, any last questions? Well, I think I have nothing much to say, but I really appreciate your insight and the, the amount of passion you show. I think it's totally give us another insight of uh, of the game itself, I would say. And then especially on your on your insight of what it's meaning. It's like, so really appreciate me, Coach Mano, for your time and uh, Helping us on another episode. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks. I wish you also all the best. Keep going. Always important to have you guys always doing a good job that we can spread a lot of information and also get a lot of information from other people and, and we all together can somehow help to develop the football in, in that region. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you so much. Uh, any, Coach, any last words from yourself before we wrap it up? No, no. Everything okay? Okay. <laughs> all right. That's wonderful. Okay, everyone. Uh, with that said, you know, we will end this week's episode of the Bola Bola Show. Goodbye for now and thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye-bye.